Had it not been for the English Civil War, this castle located among the Purbeck Hills in Dorset would have been one of the most spectacular medieval castles to survive in the United Kingdom. Today it is very ruinous, but the shattered remains of the keep still rise high atop the steep hill that it sits on, and have captured the imagination of visitors and artists alike for centuries. The castle was also the setting for some dark deeds for its long history, from being the possible site of a murder of a young Saxon king, to an act of betrayal that brought upon this castle's eventual demise. The name comes from the Anglo-Saxon word Kjofan, which means a cutting. This referred to the gap in the rolling hills that the later castle dominated over. Traces of an Anglo-Saxon hall have been found on the site, and it was believed to have been the place where Edward the Martyr was assassinated in 978 AD. After the Norman invasion of England, a castle was established shortly after the conquest, one of 36 castles established in England between 1066 and 1087. While most castles around the 11th century started off as earth and timber castles, Corfe Castle was built from the outset with stone walls surrounding the top of the hill. As you can see behind me, the defenders would have had an excellent view of any enemy activity in the nearby area, and we're not even at the keep yet. The large keep was constructed under the reign of King Henry I, and this was eventually whitewashed in 1244 to emphasise its importance as a royal castle. Further work to improve the defences was added in the early 13th century, when curtain walls and large gatehouses with cylindrical towers were installed. The castle's final defensive form was completed by the 1220s, which would have been an imposing challenge for any invading army attempting to storm the castle by force. If an attacking force had managed to break through the outer baileys and gatehouses, Norman keeps were usually designed so that a route to the main entrance would trail all the way around the walls. This is the route that twists around up the hill towards the keep, and it was designed this way so that any defenders would have the maximum amount of opportunity to fire any attackers. The strength of this castle was evidenced during the Civil War of 1138 to 1153, which was waged between Empress Matilda and Stephen I. The garrison had switched sides to Matilda and withstood a siege by Stephen's army. During the Middle Ages, trebuchets such as this reconstruction behind me would have been standard equipment for siege warfare. Throughout the reign of the later Plantagenet kings, only maintenance and upgrades were carried out on the castle, and it did not see any further military action throughout the remainder of the Middle Ages. These ruins are part of a building called a Gloriette, which was constructed during the reign of King John and served as a luxury residence to show off wealth and power. By 1572, the castle was no longer required as a royal castle, and so it was sold to Sir Christopher Hatton, where the castle took on a new role as a grand residence complete with a terrace garden in the outer bailey. Standing on the high mound, Corfe Castle looks absolutely impregnable, but by the time gunpowder became standard equipment, the tables were turned. The English Civil War that divided the country was the death knell for many medieval castles, which had up until this point escaped ruin and decay. As testament to this castle's strength, Corfe Castle did indeed withstand a first siege attempt by the Parliamentarians in 1643 where a small number of royalist soldiers repelled attacks by the Roundhead army until they broke off their siege having lost over 100 men. But by December 1645, the parliamentarians were back, and Lady Mary Banks's valiant attempts to hold the fortress were this time sabotaged by treachery, as one of the defenders left the Sally Port door open for the parliamentarians to seize the castle. 
As many castles became strongholds for isolated pockets of royalist resistance during the English Civil War, the parliamentarians proceeded with a campaign of slighting castles to make them unusable. For this purpose, artillery or teams of sappers would purposely destroy sections of a castle, as can be seen from one of the gatehouses that has completely cracked open with one half slipping down the hillside. There are traces of the fierce destruction caused by the siege and later on the slighting of the castle all around here. For instance, behind me, you can see a section of wall which lays completely flat. Corf Castle suffered the buildings and fortifications at the top of the castle almost entirely obliterated, and half of its mighty 23 metre high keep was demolished by gunpowder planted at the base of the structure. Large parts of the central part of the castle have been reduced to rubble. In fact, it's very difficult to imagine what these buildings once were. Like many other ruined castles around England, Corfe Castle became a romantic ruin that attracted visitors, especially during the Victorian times, when the railway was established in 1888 that can be seen snaking through the hilly terrain from the top of the castle. The castle and its estate was handed over to the National Trust, and following conservation work to preserve the remains, has become a popular attraction in the area. Because of its location and still impressive fortifications, Corfe Castle is one of my favourite castles in the UK, and the only thing I didn't like during my visit was this rather annoying musical tree that must have been placed here for an event. I am going to burn down their tree. If you have enjoyed this video then please consider leaving a like and following my channel for more. I'll have more historical places from the south of England as well as many more videos to come. So until next time, see you around!